Hello, my name is Jana Markovei and I am the AGK RBH watercolor tutor. I am very excited to share with you today how to paint a hedgehog. I hope you're excited as well, so let's get started. For today's painting, we're going to need a brush, water, paint. I'm going to use these types of paint, but if you have tubes, it's absolutely fine. And a scrap piece of paper, this is optional. Also, you can have a smaller piece of paper but I'm going to use a bigger one, it's easier to demonstrate. And today we're going to paint a hedgehog. I'm going to use a medium-sized brush and I'm going to first of all tap it in a bit of water. Next I'm going to get some yellow. I'm going to use yellow as my drawing colour. I'm going to use it to find the outline of my drawing and once I'm happy with my drawing I'm going to cover it up with the actual colour for my hedgehog. I make sure that the colour is quite thin and translucent and then when I'm happy with how thin my colour is I'm going to create one big oval shape. And mine is not perfectly horizontal, it's at a bit of an angle. Next, I'm going to find where I would like my hedgehog's face to be, and I think I would like it here. I'm going to add two lines that will suggest my hedgehog's face and nose. I think I would like the nose to be somewhere around here, and then from here I'll drag one line upwards at a bit of an angle, and another one downwards. where I'd like my hedgehog's paws to be. It can have one here, another one here. For the paws I'm creating something that would resemble an oval shape and then adding, it's almost like a heart shape but then I'm adding three curves. You can also think about it as a three but rather than just two semicircles, three semicircles. Front ones are pointing downwards, back ones pointing up. Let's add the ears, so they could be somewhere around here, and maybe the eyes can be somewhere around here, can make the nose a little bit bigger. This is the overall drawing for our hedgehog. If you're happy with the overall drawing, I think it's quite cute, we can let this dry for a second as we're thinking about our next step. Our next step would be to find the right colours, but before we need to pause and let this dry for a second. I'm going to use a mixture of beige and yellow and I'm making sure that I like this colour by drying it on the scrap piece of paper. I add a lot of water to my brush and then I am going to paint this on the outside edge. The more water you add to your brush, the more fluid the colour is going to be and the nicer it is going to apply and you can drag it along for longer. Now I'm just reinforcing the, the colour and the shape. Something you can do when you have to cover up a very large area of paper is to change up your brush. So if you do have a bigger brush, you can use this now to fill up the colour of the hedgehog's body. I'm avoiding the face area and I'm also avoiding the pose area especially the top ones, whereas with the back ones I can add a little bit of colour around here. Have you seen how hedgehogs tend to round up in balls if they're feeling a little bit scared? They're very very cute, but that's kind of what we're going for. This is the image that we're aiming to achieve here. A hedgehog that's hugging himself in a bit of a ball, which is something that I'd like to do myself when it's this cold. Lovely! Now, let's pause this for a second, allow it to dry, and we'll come back to it 
and we're going to add the spines. When the paper is no longer shiny, we are ready to start our next layer. For that, we're going to use a little bit of water on our brush and then get a little bit of brown. And let's add the spines. So just moving alongside our hedgehog's body, starting from the tip of the brush and then dragging the brush outwards. Almost like pen painting a sun. I think it's quite a relaxing activity. I think it's quite a nice pattern of movement. I really enjoy this. And we're going to go like this around the whole body, adding more pigment when we need to, making sure it's not too dense, trying it on our scrap piece of paper, and then just continuing. They don't all have to look the same. They don't need to all be perfect or identical. Actually, the opposite is true. Making them as unique as possible. There's no two things in nature that look the same. Lovely. And now we're going to do the same, but imagining there is another row inside. If you want, you can change the color a little bit, so maybe mix your brown with a little bit of beige. And now you have some more interesting spines. And continue going around, now about one centimeter more towards the inside of our hedgehog's body. Painting the, sting, the spines. So lovely. I find this so relaxing. Nice. For my next roll, I think I'll get some more brown. Just because I want my painting to be nice and interesting. And I want to use all the autumnal colors. And I'm going to go around again. A bit more inwards, adding the spines, adding more pigment if I find that my painting is a bit too watered down. But this depends a lot on your own style and what you personally like. Some people gravitate naturally towards more saturated tones, whereas others really like the translucent aspect of watercolour. It is all about your own personal taste. Isn't this fun? Oh, I love watercolour. Also, if you find that you would like to mix up the colours, please do so. Please be as creative as you want with the colours that you're using. I'm just suggesting some here. Also, you are the one to decide when the hedgehog is finished. So if you'd like to add more rows or if you want to add more colours, please do so. Add more spines if yours needs some more. You are the artist. I'd call this area done. Wonderful. I'll let this area dry. Now I'm going to work on our lovely hedgehog's bottom. And I'm going to add some spines, this time in a circular motion. I'm going to add some of my darker brown as well and continue painting like this. Just moving around in circles and whenever I find there is a gap I'll fill it in with a spine. A bit more of the bright one. And I'm going to allow our spines to dry as I now move to painting the paws, for our paws I'm going to use some darker brown and I'm going to just fill them in nicely, covering the yellow outline.
I will also use the same brown for the nose as well as the eyes and the ears and I can add a few more things if I feel that an area would, would look better with a bit more I'll then get a little bit of beige, add a drop of red, and then mix it. Now our hedgehog has blushy cheeks. And a blushy belly. Continuing to fill in the belly and again, I am using this beige nuance because that's what I prefer But if you think another color would work better, please do mix up your own and Also, if you prefer much stronger nuances, do use a stronger pigment I like my watercolors to be quite fluid and very translucent like so you should also decide whether you'd like to leave any gap areas, any white gap areas. It's again a matter of artistic taste. And some to the hedgehog's ears. You can add some darker tones to bring forward the face and you can finish it off adding a bit of an outline to the areas that you feel would work or would look better with that and here it is we just painted a sleepy hedgehog. I hope you enjoyed this, I hope you found it relaxing. If you'd like to hear more or you'd like to join the watercolor series, check out the links that will appear on the screen right now. Thank you very much for watching, goodbye!